I'm shit. I'm no one, I never have been no one. I'm part of a system. Ten years, ten years in the fucking band that no one told me. No, when I'm 50, right, I'll be dead, man. Doesn't look like this on Baywatch, America. Yeah. No. Come to the States, they said. In June, it'll be fucking lovely. It's rained every fucking gig we've been at. Yeah. Bar, two nights in LA, one night in Santa Barbara, one night in Las Vegas, <coughs> and three nights in New York. Other than that, it's rained every fucking day. How many gigs have you played? This will be the 16th, I think. Is that right, Maggie? 20th. <laughs> yeah. It is. 21 before we cancelled those. Okay. No one remembers 16. This is the longest tour I've ever done. It's five weeks, right? And I've been doing this. Not, not, not in this band, but I've been touring for like 15 years now. So five weeks is the longest, and I think that that probably says it all about well it's gone because. I was five weeks on the road with anybody, let alone this fucking shower on this bus. The whole thing's been a real good experience. The New York show, second night at Radio City, was a real um, fantastic achievement and a great ambition, you know, because of the great drummers that have actually worked at that venue. Buddy Rich, Gene Krupp, all these people that I idolise. Actually, to get to play there in the same place as these guys was just was really something for me. this tour I've never ever played a good gig in New York before I mean I you know came in with Ride and with Hurricane and with Oasis last year and they were all they were all really you gigs you walk off going you just walk off and go in the dressing room and go like this you know that was really tough in some way whether it's that bad audience well not bad audience but like a quiet audience or just you played bad or whatever it was didn't get the didn't get that feeling you want but these gigs in New York have been fantastic, all of them, especially the first two. Second night was the very best. That was the best night of the tour. Second night in Radio City. Sounded a lot more at peace than I've known you. Are you Some more at peace now? I'm a bit worried about it. Yeah? Yeah, which makes me think I was at war for a while, which I never noticed. But um, I suppose I could. Yeah, you, I'm 34 now, so I mean. Yeah. You know, this is 10 years. It was like seven of those years was the biggest head fuck that anybody could ever imagine. And then a little bit more for me because I was writing the songs and I was. 
the spokesman for that generation of brick poppers or whatever you want to call them. Has this been the most fun? This, this is definitely the most fun. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, obviously because we've we've done the whole world tour, which was like I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it was like pressure or anything or anything, but on like you know, it was like well, it was like a new lineup. Is it going to be any good? No, this kind of thing. And also, there was records out to sort of talk about and, and stuff like that, you know. And this is like it's for the music, man, and the kids, you know. Alright man, it's been good, it's been good, not no pressure. Man. It's been great, I've really, really enjoyed myself. How'd the Oasis boys been? Oh, they're uh, a bunch of wankers, man. No, they're good guys, they're good guys. I carried them a 95, I'm having a good time with them. Hope I carry them again in five years. Sucker! This is the rest of the rest. So here's where we are right yeah. Is that the main ones? Here's where we are at the moment right here. Let's put this one first. Get this fuck out of the way. This is best of the rest. No, no. That one? Right, yeah, yeah. So this is going to be the first single right here. And then we'll have... We'll do the rest after that. In October this comes out, man. <laughs> it's kind of short, but we, you know, it's kind of. It's, yeah, it just goes like that. Uh, uh, switch, switch, switch it off. Switch it out. No, 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 no. It's just a fucking shit, man. No, you've tripped the switch. I'll trip the switch. I'll trip the bitch. No, no, no. Seven. Seven. You want to hold it up there again? Yeah, and this, like, it's. Dick, man, this don't come nowhere. This don't go nowhere. This now. is your film, Liam. This stays until. We have it, yeah? <laughs> Band 10 years, man. I've fucking done all, I've been through all the fucking shit, i.e. fucking like dickheads camping outside my fucking house. If I learned anything, if I've got no emotions, man, to write a fucking song, I must be blind. How do you find the time to do all this? You find the time because you want it. It's like, you know, where do football supporters find the time to go and follow their team, you know, two nights a week, yeah. uh, seven months of the year? They're passionate about it, and I, I like, you know, I fucking, I like, I love music, and I like the people that make it. Some of them, and once you've got some really cool guys who you like making making music that you love, then you'll find it. Fine. All the time finds you. Is it gonna be on? Dude? I've wanted to see them live forever, and I fucking love Oasis. Liam, is the balls. Noel's the balls. I'm the biggest fucking American fan. And in my restaurant, and we're gonna be right down in front. It's all we fucking play. Oasis. You, I shouldn't swear this much, huh? I'd turn it down, actually. This is protect all. You gotta switch it off. Switch it back on again. No, not that. That fella. Yep. Like, I'll tell you how it feels right here. He's got all these tunes right there that were meant to be on the last album to make us the greatest band in the world. He left them off and he put his fucking I can see a light standing by the fire. Shoo be dee be dee. Boo be dee be dee. And that's what he fucking did. And he takes us, puts us back about two years back in time when he should play his best songs all the time. End the story. So then now he's fucking like, we're all writing fucking shit. Oh, I don't know. 
Ask him. Maybe if you, you had a suit on, though, what happened in the hotel, maybe that wouldn't have happened if you had a suit on there. Oh, completely. Tell us what happened. Well, I'll see you later. Oh! I want to get the story of uh, Liam being chucked out of this hotel. Oh, this one? Yeah. It's got a It's It's scruffy cool. <laughs> you don't need to and, go and, and, and here he comes. That's basically it in a nutshell. Well, you've got him looking like cat weasel. and got what he deserves, man. Let's go in for the premise. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's probably more to it than probably more to it to it than he's letting on, believe me. Off to fucking bed even. Are you on the bus? Am I on the bus? No, I'm back in the I'm back in the hotel, mate. I just wanna see what's in your head. I mean, we wouldn't be making the records that we make if it wasn't for Andy and Cameron Allen. So it's like, I would be, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't think they feel insulted by it, but I would if I was them, I'd be like, well, what about me? You know what I mean, I, I contribute just as much to the group as anybody else. So, but it's just that thing about we have, we have become the focal point of the band, so that's the way it's going to stay. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, it's impossible to, certainly in the eyes of the media, well, yeah, anyway, because it's so, so recognisable. Yeah, well, so, because so many people have come and gone in the past, like, Tony McCall and Ronan Griggs, it's like, you know, Liam's the only original member left, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing about Oasis is it should be, it's a block of sound that should should be like it is, and it's, you shouldn't play around with it too much, but there are little spaces where you can. Why did, why did Thingy... Why did Thinky play? Why did uh, Mix Mitchell play like that? And John right. Bonham not? Well, John Bonham did. John Bonham did in the early days, but he was like, what it is, it's really boring. The reason it's played like that, this is the, probably the best way to play the drums, right? Like that. But the reason that drummers play like that is because it all comes from the military. Uh -huh. And the side drum would have been on the side like, of your shoulder, and it's hard to play like that. Oh, okay. So they developed it playing like that, and it really comes down to who taught you. Because some drummers, and a lot of those drummers, like Mitch Mitchell, were taught probably like, yeah. older jazz drummers. Right. So they would have been shown like that and just right, kept right, it. Right. Well, they got rock school for today, yeah, children. Go. I told you, it's nothing radical. Drum workshop. Drum workshop. Episode two. I'll just piss off the rest of the band. You caught it for once. Yeah. <laughs> So do you do any um, walk vocal warm-ups before the gig? Some, a little bit, not too bad. I just go and play my guitar. No one in Gamma quite deliberate in what they play, but they also do, they do free up. And, you know, when you play the songs every night, you know when they're, they're having a good one because there's a space that they haven't never played before. And the same thing with me as well on the bass. Black Cross fans would appreciate Oasis and, and vice versa. It's, it's like two sides of the coin really, with, with the guitar bands because they, they're all about riffs and we're all about chords. That's, that's, that's how we've worked it out. The American thing, if you're a guitar player, is about the riffs you play. English kids, when they, when they learn to play the guitar, I don't think they're so fussed about getting the, the riffs exactly right. I never knew you were left-handed. I'm not. That's just for the camera, that. Oh, 
Dicker, I know you are one of the newest members of Oasis, along with Andy, but you already put a lasting impression on me. I only met you for about a minute on May 27th, but you were so sweet. I told you I loved you guys, and you said you guys loved me too. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone ever told you, you kind of look like a young Paul McCartney. Well, I think you do. You are now officially one of my favourite members in the band. I hope I get to meet you again in the future. Live forever. Your love, mum. Love Bonehead. <laughs> actually serving us no purpose whatsoever being in the country and we're not selling any records you know MTV are not playing any more of our videos we're just there because we want to be because we can and because we like the black crows and because we thought it would be a good laugh and it was and they must have done something like us at that hotel why? I don't know they just wasn't like us she rang and she goes ah oh, yeah is Mr Lewis there she no he's checked out I put the phone down on her I just don't think I don't think they liked us to what I think but that was the reason why it was good to be there, because we weren't supposed to be there. Yeah, alright, we'll go back there again then. I want to go back there again. Yeah, no. But not for a bit, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> at the first of their three sold out shows here at Finsbury Park. They're playing to 120,000 people over the next uh, three days. So how's it all going for you? All right. Yeah, yeah. enjoying the build up? No. Today is just Fantastic. wonderful. Just to travel all these miles to come down and see this is just unbelievable. Everyone has got the same cause. You speak to everyone in the pubs outside, in the queue when you come in, in the crowd, everyone's got the same. Everyone's just into it. We drew up a list of like, you know, we want all these bands to play and it's just great that it means that we can come and stay here all day and you know. And really enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Come on! I think it was the best event uh, of the year. It's going to be fantastic. It's just something special because they're previewing the new songs of the new album, so which, uh, everyone's just proper excited about, you know what I mean? The atmosphere. Just the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just going to be brilliant. I'm looking forward to doing this place because it's just big. It's an event, you know, it's one of them. It's Finsby Park to me, you know. I, I, this is where I live as well. I just It's the audience, really. I mean, the audience dictates the whole thing. We are Oasis. This is the heart of Oasis. There's no one else like Oasis. L I love music and I love Oasis. Well, it's the best band of our generation. Well, they're the best band Britain's produced for the last 25 years. They're the best band ever. The, the best, best band, band in the world. world. They're the best band in the fucking world. They're the Stone Roses rip-off band. They're good. They're very good, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, you know, they've done a lot of good... It sounds a bit silly saying it, but it's more intimate than Wembley. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller. You feel a lot more from the crowd, you can hear them a lot more. Wembley was just like a big roar. It felt quite far off, and this mm. is more like they're closer. I've fallen into the trap of trying to sing to the, to the, to the back person. But actually, physically trying to sing there, and the, high, the, the, the harder that you sing, the more out of tune you get. Hey! <laughs> and I've, I've gone back and listened to tapes of stuff and gone, that's appalling. What was I trying to do? And I forgot. I actually forget. I've got a microphone and a PA system mess. I say maybe you wanna be the one that saves me, and after all, you're my wonder wall. What the Stone Roses had, Oasis fucking grabbed it 
and ran with it, you know what I mean? I mean, the Stone Roses are probably my favourite band ever. However, you've got to embrace another band. Well, I'm not knocking them, but I'm just putting the point across that, you know... Yeah, I think the new album's good. It's definitely got more of a vibe than the last two. I think the last two were sort of more commercially pumped rather than emotionally pumped. John Squire and Noel Gallagher are different guys. No, I think they're great. You'll never beat Definitely Maybe, never. We're going to play I'm Hung in a Bad Place again, which is um, a yeah. Glam Archer um, song. I can go where I want to be, where I want to be now. The first time anybody had kind of heard it within this lot, um, I think Noel was on drums and he was playing bass and I was playing guitar and singing and we were just having a bit like the jam, really, you know. And then he went, oh, that's, we should have a go at that. And then Liam, I think, heard it the next day. I played it on my acoustic guitar. That was psychedelic, you know, playing him that without slipping into the air. Uh, impression. It's a fucking right album, man. It's a fucking bit, one of the best they've done. It's fantastic. Absolutely. I think all 11 tracks are fantastic. You've been bright and you're stolen. Nature is calling for me. The thing about using sort of uh, like Hindu times and things is, is bringing it's a, it's a great paper in India and to use it as a sort of a, you know an icon for the first song or the release of the new album, it's fabulous. The new album's really good. Fantastic, fantastic. Awesome. fantastic. Back to the best. The new album is that it's wicked. It's awesome. It's the best shit. Brilliant. The new album is great. Oh, new album, excellent. Was it a, an enjoyable record to make? Yeah, it was. It was a dream, really. I mean, when you got that voice and you got Noel coming in, playing you Stop Crying Your Heart Out, he just bent down on one knee and just played it on an acoustic. And he didn't even have all the words finished. And it's, that's, just think, yeah, man, that's, that's special, you know. They, they, they sell them in, in India and cassettes. We don't have, the CDs is a new thing, but they're all copies. And I mean, you pay about 12 pounds for a mirror. You can buy it for about a quid. 200 rupees. And I think, you know, how does Noel make his money from India? I don't know. And then on top of that, he makes us a song of Hindu time. <laughs> Rock and roll. Good couple of Liam tracks on there. Liam songs. He's got the best songs. He's got the act the same. He strolls the same. He walks about the stage the same as Ian Brown does, but he's taking a different direction. The only way they fucking suck it a different what, what way is from you ripping the Beatles off. Why, why are you watching yeah, yeah, I fucking... He's having a go, isn't he? Liam's having a go, so credit's him. Yeah. This is a real oasis, man. They're fucking... Actually, a couple of hours um, away from showtime um, for, for you, um, you know, did you kind of sort of like get nervous as it sort of, you know, inches sort of nearer? I but, think you it's know. probably the same for everyone, isn't it? It's like, it's, the day's all right, and then it's when the, when somebody comes in and says, right, it's 10 minutes, and, yeah. everybody, and, and, then, and then everyone leaves the dressing room. And then, you know, the singers go into a corner and start doing their... Ooh, getting the hair ready. Starting their chanting and all that stuff, and the guitarist are behind them like that. It's always like the last piece, you know? I, I always tend to... My shoelaces are never right. They always either too tight or too loose. It's true every single gig, man. <laughs> Oh, the, the ten minutes before you go on, then you then you think, ah, oh, right, well that's why I'm here. Yeah. You know. But um, One minute. I, I mean, so, some nights, I mean, some nights you get nervous when you're playing at 500 people. Yeah. And some nights, I mean, I remember walking out of stage at Nebworth and halfway through the third song, thinking, actually, I should be really more nervous than this, you know. I was a bit scared on the first night because it was so muddy, you know, the rain was been, been pouring down all day. It was mayhem in the crowd. There was no front row. It was just a load of blue and red shirts pulling people out. It was sort of like completely. Steam was mental. It was like the late reaction after all the big tunes. You just see this big. There was it was just all going off tonight. There was trousers flying in the air. There's also John. Emerson died. He's the greatest bass player ever. And um, when he passed on, the mantle passed to Manny. Anyway, we, we do our first gig after, after this and we dedicate a song to Imagination. Right at the end of the solo, classic Emerson solo, my bass string snaps. It doesn't happen often to bass strings, it don't often go. And it was just like Emerson in heaven going, you cheeky little... <laughs> That's, that's my riff, and you're... I'm not even cold yet. This is 
is called Little by Little. Did you enjoy doing Finsbury Park for a starter? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It was good, really, really good. It should have been a bit more nervous than it, a bit more nerve wracking than it was, because they were really important gigs, but we didn't realise that until the Monday morning. After Why were they so important for you? We don't like to piss about, you know what I mean? We like to do the big, 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 big gigs, you know, because it defines us as a band. And playing after all them groups, every band on that bill was amazing, do you know what I mean? To go on after them and the reaction that we got. And and it just don't do flashy videos and do amazing marketing campaigns but you you can you can almost entice people to buy your records mm -hmm. right but you can't fake it to, to the crowd especially the crowd that comes to our gigs the people that come to our gigs is as real as it gets and they would see through us in a minute if we start disappearing up our own ass it was, i mean it was just you know again That'll define our year, do you know what I mean? Mm. With them gigs, and, and, we, and we keep doing them once every two or three years. So. The gigs have always been received well. The gigs mm. have always been great. The albums never get received well, I don't think. No. no I, don't I mean, think. I mean, I've, I've always been, I've always been slagged off. I do remember mo mo Morning Glory getting universally panned in England. You know, the enemy gave us six out of ten. And funnily enough, the enemy had they've written that big book about us. Have you seen it in the yeah, I've seen it. Well, yeah. they've rewritten all the reviews for the albums. Have you noticed that? Have they? Yeah. No, we get nines we and get, stuff get, like get nine that. We get nine out of ten for BA now, you know. So they like they they, they they sort of like rewrite it to, you know, to readdress the But I mean, I, nobody's ever liked our music anyway, apart from the people that buy it. Mm. But anyway, yeah, the gigs. I don't think we've ever done really. I don't think we've not done any really really bad gigs. No. Well, there was a unique one the second night at Wembley. We'd have to say, wouldn't you? That was great, mate. <laughs> Well, I didn't Describe say it was bad, it I said it was should have, It should have been exactly where I was stood and it was fucking having it. <laughs> if the new album hadn't been so well received, would you have called it, it a was day? It, it was it well received by though. It was only well I've received got, by I've it's only well received by the fans and that. Well, the critics say it's rubbish and we should pack it Heathen in. Heathen chemistry. It? Everyone I read that said it was. I've got loads well. and loads of, of different people have written it up and it's got oh, a really I good write up. I, I, can, I, can, I, can I pack it in? Can I can I just put some we're signing a new record deal this time next year. Are you? So let's get let's get this straight. We ain't going anywhere. Mm. So there'll be another six albums. So anybody at the NME and Mojo and Select is that still going? Okay, I think it was Q actually. Q or whatever. Get your head around it, man, because we're in it for the long run, and we always were, you know. You've taught me fuck all. I've taught you how to play guitar. Have you fuck? I've heard him, eh? Have you heard him? <laughs> have you heard him? Have you so have I've come him? up to you. All of a sudden, at 29, you just went, but I ain't have that. Take your glasses off, tell the truth. I'm telling you, take, take your glasses off. No, because I'm not lying. I'm not lying either. But he's never taught me anything. I've gone over to him, I've gone, I think the yeah, proof's in the pudding. Like I think once they heard the songs, it was like, you know. Yeah, I don't think so, mate. You're right there, that's why. That's how I see it. Talking to the songbird yesterday Flew me to a place that far away She's a little pilot in my mind Singing songs we love to pass the time So like last year, it was like, no, in fact, it was in France when I wrote Songbird. When we were doing standing on Sunday's Designs, I went for a walk. And I just sat under the tree for a couple of hours, just playing this tune, which is Songbird, and then just thought of these words. I was going through a bit of a, hey, and that was it. It came up pretty easy, brought it in about ten minutes, and mm. and that was it. And I'll still do that. I'm not mad if I never write another song, yeah. Because I'm I'm quite happy singing them, and that's my first thing. It's being a singer instead of being caught about writing songs. But Keith Richard said something at once where, you know, you don't go after songs. Songs find you. To, well, to me, it's a bit special, and I don't know where it's coming from, and I can't really put my finger on it. So you but I'm, got... I'm glad it's happening. I think Noel's looking at Liam, going, "Go on, son," you know. And I know he jokes, because Liam never ever plays anybody else's songs on his guitar, ever. He's always writing, all the time. Whenever you hear him with a guitar, it's going to end up in a song of his. You can't knock Songbird and Born on a Different Cloud. You could probably say, Better Man, you know, it starts and it finishes, it doesn't really say much. That's fine, but I'll tell you what, man, when you see 40,000 people dancing to it, you'll change your mind. But you can't fucking knock Songbird, you know, you can't. It's great, because, you know, you'll show him a new chord, or you'll go, well, that, if you put that finger there, that's what, that'll get you right. And he's like, all oh, right, great, and he's off over the field, like, literally. 
and he'll come back with a song with it, you know. And we just go, how do you want it to sound? And he's going, I want to fucking, I want it to sound like that. I want to sound like John Lennon. I want it to sound like fucking Elvis. I want it to sound like Batman. And that's it. I'm not going there and go, you know, like fucking, you know, I'm not scared of going, I'm not scared of, you know, my influences, you know what I mean? The fuck, I wear them on my sleeve, you know what I mean? It's the song that we're doing, whoever's written it, this is the way I see it anyway. Oh, this is this is my story, and I'm sticking to this for the next 18 months. It's if, like, if, if we write a fucking song, you're the man. If, we, yeah. write, if, if anyone's <laughs> write a fucking song, Noel comes and hogs it and fucking makes it his own. No. Basically, he goes, I'll have a bit of that, and the fucking tells, cracks the whip and tells us. What, what happens? That's what happens. Completely uniform. What happens is, he'll, 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 he'll spin you the sham where he goes, well, if fucking one of them write a song, then, like, they're, they're responsible for the who mixed it. <laughs> And the reason me saying he's going to be the best songwriter in the next five years in England is me just putting pressure on him. Oh, oh he'll have a breakdown or something, you know, he'll fucking crumble under the pressure and give up writing songs. The bastard. I'm never going to write, like, an album of fucking songs. I'm never going to be a guy who goes, oh, I've wrote 40 songs. I'll probably write about 20, and I reckon that'll be me done. But there'll be 20 important ones. I think Songbird is amazing just because it's really, really simple, mm. and I love it. I think Born on a Different Cloud is I don't think he wrote it. I think he's lying. I think somebody else wrote it. I don't think I was when he played it to me, I was like, fuck you know, you know. And his lyrics are mega. Well I'd played some of the demos to uh, me mates anyway, you know, and, and especially um, Born on a Different Cloud, that was the one that just completely jumped out and they were all going, God you know, and, and obviously it's so Lennon and so I said I was going, man, yeah, well we we stick in we dig into it and I feel we did and it's like, I don't know whether Liam's told you, but we call it like, you know, a Scouse Odyssey. Music that I want to make, you know, I'd, I'd be fucking worried if I started playing guitar and going, and come up with some like kind of fucking Slipknot tune, and that's all I could do. And I go, ugh. You know what I mean? It's, when I pick the guitar up, it's like fucking, I just play these things and it sounds great to me, and I think, that's cool. Do you ever do solo stuff? I don't know, I, I'd, I'd prefer him, I'd prefer him to be involved with him anyway. And the rest of the... I'd... So he loves you, really? No, he does. No, but I often... I, time, but I, I, I often you know why, don't you? I often why? think... Because I fucking make his records good. <laughs> that would be our records. If well, it makes don't good. I? Are they not my records, are they? Are they? No, they're not You're the one who gets paid for all the money. Put it on, aren't you? If I got fucking paid all the money, how come you're the one dressed like a fucking boy band, eh? Fuck it off. Liam's just a... He's a born star, you know. Him. He'll sit down and play piano in his own little weird way and, you know, he's getting there, man. He's a good songwriter. Twat. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where we were doing this fucking session in the Olympic, and <laughs> one of his tunes. It's fucking fun, man. And I'd, I'd, I'd gone off somewhere and come back to see these the, m mic'd up a fucking Hoover. You know, going all no, fucking no, beat around no, no, on everybody. You know the tune like, um, I want you, do, 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 want you so bad. You know, at the end it goes, do, 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 and he goes, shh. Fuck, what the fuck's that? He sounds like. As if some missus has walked in with a fucking Hoover going, excuse me, George, lift your feet up. John, feet up, and all that. It sounded like a fucking Hoover, so then I went, ah, well, let's get the Hoover out. So we got Henry the Hoover out, and then fucking mic'd it up. And it was fucking great. It was like a fucking plane taking off. So Noel's walking up the fucking thing, and someone's gone, and he's going, what are the other two? going, fucking, check it out, man. They're in there fucking kicking the Hoover, going, yeah. come on, come on, to the Hoover. Great. Yeah. And then we took it off. Yeah, <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, it was like, you know, it sounded fucking rubbish. But, you know, it sounded, it going, it sounded, no, it sounded great in the music, right, but once the music ended, all you heard was... He was going... <laughs> in the end. They all, they all, they all sat there going, so we listen to it, it man. No, we'll phase it, 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 we'll it. They're going, yeah. it sounds Sound like it. a plane taking off. I've grown to love that boy so much that it's like, you just got to fucking let him do his thing, man, you know. He can... Liam, Liam's the kind of person, he's like, he always wants more responsibility. I want to do it, I want to do it. As soon as you say, there you go. Mm. He'll, 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 you know, you're just there, a comedy door slam and some comedy footsteps running up the hallway and then someone going, yeah, I'll pint Guinness, mate, you know, and he'll fucking straight to the pub, he's like, fucking, you know, I, you know, I want to do this, I want to I wanna do more interviews. Yeah, but they're going to ask you questions about, you know, about stuff. Oh, fuck that then. <laughs> <laughs> the day he walked in here, we were doing something for Stanley Shoulders Giants and he said, I've written a song called Little James, expecting me to go like that. I don't give a fuck what you've written. Get out, you know. I just went, we'll play it. I was there, and he played it, and we just went, right, it's going on the album. And he was like, hang on a minute, what do you mean? I was like, it's going on the album, man. You've just written you for, oh, I don't know, oh, fucking hell, I don't know, if we change this bit. It's like, look, you either want to be a songwriter or you don't. He's the one person in England I'd rather go out for a drink with more than anybody just because yeah. he's real, you know, and he's not, yeah. there's no bullshit with that boy. 
you know, what you see is what you get. It's as simple as that. And people go on about his image being, a, you know, he plays up to it and all that, but he's been like that since I've known him, really. You know, he's just a lippy, loudmouth, funny as fuck. Yeah. You know, it's like, what did you watch that pop star behaving badly last night on no, Sky One? No. I mean, it was just hilarious. There's some of Liam's finest moments. <laughs> oh, I've had a right old ball, even when I've had a. Yeah. Even it's when it's great. been rubbish and a nightmare, I just want to go Poof, like that. It's been great, you know what I mean? And the thing is, no matter how good it's been for us, for you, it's been twice as good. Because if it wasn't for us, believe you me, the British music scene would have died a fucking long time ago. Because you, if you look back to 1994, all the bands, everybody that's putting records out now that was putting records out before 1994, they were shit before we come along. If we done one thing, it was we changed, we, we moved the goalposts and we said, listen here mate, number 23 <laughs> in the charts and playing Oxford Zodiac Club ain't fucking good enough anymore. It's now number ones and number twos, and it's going to America and giving it some. And we dragged the British music, we dragged the English guitar music out of the gutter. And it's simple as that. And you might not like the music, and you know, you might think we're a pair of arrogant fuckers or what have you, but you know, you still love it. A lot of people write that certain album because they know it will sell that amount of copies, and it, 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 you know they're writing it just for the sake of that. What they're literally in it for the yeah, cash. They're, yeah, they're writing an American album so it'll break American market, or they're writing this and that for that, and it's mm. like that ain't what it's about. You have to write. Are you sound quite surprised that people would be in it just for the money, cat? Well, from what you said about being a songwriter yeah, and having different. to feel some, but do you. Are you a one, a one well, of them? Well, I can safely say that we're probably as real as it gets, you know, but if I, I find it quite amazing that you would sit there and think, well, oh, God, do you think people are really in it for the money? Of course they are. Do you think it just runs like any other business? Of course it does. Yeah. What do you think about pe um, bands like S Club Juniors? Mega. Because they've got people as young as 11. I was in Olympic Mega. Studios, right, mixing this album, and there's a bunch of irritating little kids in the canteen, right, doing all them stupid dance moves. And I've come downstairs and I've gone, here are all the kids upstairs. I'm in a band with five people. The other four all went, oh, it says Club Juniors. <laughs> How did you fucking know that? Oh, well, you know, they don't tell you, aren't they? So it's like, hang on a minute, when did you lot change? <laughs> when, you know, did I miss a meeting here or something? <laughs> all of them, you know, the fucking Prince of Darkness. It says Club <laughs> Juniors, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over in my monitors. <laughs> <laughs>